Alright, what's happening everybody? It's your boy Akeen and welcome to today's vlog. Sorry I haven't seen you guys the past couple of days. Had a couple of technical difficulties actually uploading my videos. But I am back continuing all of my top 5 players for each position coming towards the 2013 NFL Draft. Now I need to start heading towards the offensive line. Today I'm going to give you two blogs, the offensive tackles and the offensive guards. Now I must say we have a fine group of players I have for you guys. I think there's going to be a lot of, of Pro Bowl players within these offensive guards and tackles upcoming years in the National Football League. I think we have great talent and depth in both of these two positions. Now I'm going to give you my top five tackles starting the things off with my first vlog. Starting at number five, Dallas Thomas out of Tennessee. He was second team all SEC and he's a good player. I like him a lot. He's very good at, at, at pulling and he shows the potential to play both the guard and the tackle position. That shows that he has a little bit of versatility as a lineman. Also, he comes off good off the three-point stance, good at the knees, good bending the knees. I think he's a decent player. Now, there's a couple things he does need to work on is that he lacks the foot quickness, he needs to um, adjust his agility and improve at the agility and his footwork. Also, he must become stronger in his lower body. He can tend to lose ground in pass blocking as well as run blocks in his in, on the ground game. He really needs to improve in his lower body strength, his legs strength in order to keep ground and maintain his position, particularly at the pass blocking, um, um, uh, during passing plays for his pass blocking. I think he's a good player overall, and I had to jot him at number five. At number four, a little bit of a of a disagreement for a lot of people. I'm going to go with DJ Fluker out of Alabama. I think a lot of people think he could be the number two or number three offensive tackle coming towards this year's draft. But I had a bump at, at number four, but I still think he's a great talent. He is thick, tall and long great player and then he even displays a couple of, of some decent footwork with his feet and he has the power to collapse the edge and particularly in creating running lanes for the running back now a couple of weaknesses that he has is that he needs to get his hands up a little bit more quicker especially when the hands are slapped down he needs to get back into position and get him up quickly in order to maintain and sustain his blocks also, he will struggle against defensive ends who can quickly come off the line of scrimmage, off the snap of the football. Now, there's a couple of players who are quick in the National Football League and coming off the snap. If they're not too quick in coming off the snap, they will definitely not get past DJ Fluker. He is a great blocker. Also, he does re um, lack recovery speed, especially when the, when the quarterback is holding on to the ball way too long. He might struggle if, if the quarterback continues to play and do, be, do more mobile play scrambling and creating more opportunities for his receivers to catch the football but he would lack um, the blocking ability if it's too long he needs to work on that just a little bit a little bit more endurance and that recovery speed in order to sustain his blocks but he is still a great talent if the defensive events and defensive players are too quick are not quick enough in the snap of the ball they are not getting past this kid and I think a lot of people think that he could be at number two or number three but I had to bump him at number four at number three I'm gonna go with Oklahoma's Lane Johnson. I think he had a good workout overall at the scouting combine. 28 reps at 225 and he ran a 4 7 40. Good speed for an offensive tackle. Now there's a reason behind that why he ran so well. He was actually an honorable mention all state quarterback in the state of Texas. Yes, quarterback. He was a quarterback before he was offensive tackle. Now he has the right attitude and great work ethic to improve. He shows a lot of potential for me in my personal opinion, he shows great athleticism, and I already mentioned you his feet, his feet, uh, his speed, good footwork. It added at that. Now the problem behind this, and the, and the reason why he's at number three, is because he doesn't have too much experience at the uh, offensive tackle position. But like I said, I think he has a lot of potential. That's why I had to put him over DJ Fluker. But like I said, Fluker is still a great athlete. At number two, I'm gonna go with Central Michigan's. Eric Fisher, he is great, great frame at six foot seven, three hundred and six pounds. He's a smooth athlete, and he shows good balance, quickness, and agility. Very mobile. I really think I think he could be a great athlete in the National Football League, and he is a natural knee bender, which means he can bend those knees well, stay in position, sustain his block, and pass blocking. Now, the one thing that I'm concerned about about him is, is that the lack of high level competition that he played at Central Michigan. He did not play consistently week after week against top level players like my number one player. 
All due respect, the MAC conference is a growing is a growing conference. Did, they did have a team represent um the Orange Bowl in Northern Illinois, making it to the Orange Bowl um, from the MAC conference. I respect them for that, but they're still not strong enough against the AQ conferences, the major conferences in college football. And because of the lack of competition, I had to put them at number two. And my number one player, this is an obvious choice, Luke Jokil out of Texas A&M. Great athlete, great balance, and he is, he had a decent workout. And he did run a fly a 5-3-40. That was a little bit of concern for me, but he still weighs 306 pounds at six foot six. Great, great ability. He's technically sound at the left tackle position, and he's a good knee bender. Base, he has great base and his pass blocking ability. Quick feet. Now the one thing that that concerns me is that he does not um, show too much of the elite power in his upper and lower body. He's still the number one player, but he shows adequate average power in his upper and lower body. But he is well balanced and he's a great blocker. Also, Johnny Manziel was a great scrambler, a great dual threat quarterback he was very mobile so we were uh, we're not too sure if he was challenged too much at the tackle position but I still think he's a great talent he had a great year overall all American selection all SEC helping leading this team to an outstanding season under a new head coach in Kevin Sumlin Sumlin tutorized a great player and I think that the Kansas City Chiefs should go with Joe um um of Lou Joko for that first selection over um, um, Eric Fisher because of the level of competition in playing in that SEC conference. Now, I'm, that's pretty much I have for you for my top five. Now, I still have a couple of honorable mentions I need to talk about. First and foremost, I have to talk about Justin Poe of Syracuse. He's a great talent. Just out of my top five um, selections, he's actually at number six. And I'm also at number seven, Melalik Watson out of Fed's um, um, Florida State. He was actually born in England, and he did not play college in uh, any football until later on in his life. So that's why he had it. He did not make it to my top five, but he is still a great talent. Now the sleeper at the tackle position, I'm gonna go with Arkansas's Pine Bluffs, Teron Armstead. He had 31 reps at 225, and he ran a 4.7140. With those eye gouging numbers, I know a team's definitely gonna try to stack him in the and no later in the late second round of this year's NFL draft. I think this kid is very talented, but he did not play against the top competition. That's why he didn't make it to my top five. But I think a team is definitely gonna look after him and try to pick him and no later in the second round. I think he will be taken by that time. Now, next time to catch you guys is later on today to give you my top five guards. Thank you for watching this vlog. I'm your man, Keen McCall. Be easy.